Professional cyclists have experimented with different pedaling techniques for decades, all basically in search of that holy grail that's going to give them a key advantage over their rivals. In this video, we are going to show you the tools to be able to raise your cadence. But do remember, a high cadence may not make you faster in the short term, but it might just help you in the long term. Oh no, it's raining. Oh, uh, England, finally. Spinning means high cadence, which we generally refer to as upwards of 90 RPM. And this was a technique that was highlighted in the late 90s and early 2000s by a Texan who went by the name of Lance Armstrong. Now, what he found in Grand Tours was that spinning placed less fatigue on his muscular system, which could get tired over the course of three weeks, and it placed more emphasis on his cardiovascular system, which did recover a lot quicker. And since then, a lot of other riders have adopted a similar technique. So, pedal quickly and efficiently is the core skills and it has some benefits. It does, yeah, starting with the fact that if you have a limited cadence, you might well have a limited speed. So for example, if you're trying to chase onto a group at the end of a descent and you're in your hardest gear, you won't be able to go any faster than the cadence that you can produce. And then of course, there's track racing and fixed gear racing, where you've only got one gear. But when you're riding on the road, it's a lot easier to sit at 80 RPM than it is, say, to sit at 60. And that is because you don't have to put as much force down on the pedals to ride at a specific power. That's right. Same power, less force, which should mean less accumulated fatigue, which is why James said at the start of this video that although a high cadence might not make you faster straight away, it should do eventually because you'll be recovering much quicker from each and every session. And there's another benefit to high cadence, and that is the ability to change your speed. So for example, if you're racing and somebody attacks, or if you're just on a group ride, someone's trying to pip you to the top of a climb, you're gonna be far better and easier to respond to that attack if you're spinning a high cadence to begin with, rather than bogged down in a big gear. So, James, what do you do if you want to increase your cadence? Well, Oscar, it's funny you say that because we have not one, but three sessions that will help you. But first, make sure you're set up correctly before going into these sessions. Thankfully, that setup is not particularly complicated and really just involves making sure that your saddle is at the correct height for you. We've got a couple of videos here on the Global Cycling Network that will help you do just that. But the reason that it's important is also very simple. If it's too high, what you're going to find is that your pelvis rotates over the top of the saddle and it's going to be very hard to keep a high cadence. Too low and you're going to be equally uncomfortable. So once you're fully set up and you're nice and comfortable, should we go and get on with some sessions? Yeah, yeah, let's go on with the three sessions that will help you raise your cadence. Let's do it. So firstly, you want to find a flattish bit of road with a few rolling hills. And then you want to do around a 15 minute warm up. This will get the body nice and warm for the sessions. Then select a gear that allows you to sit at around 56 to 70% of your FTP. Then you're going to be doing six minute blocks. So that gear should also allow you to ride initially at 85 RPM. Then over the course of the first five minutes, you want to gradually get up to 100 RPM. And then for the final minute of those six minute blocks, you want to go up to over 110 RPM if you possibly can. Then take three minutes easy at your own self-selected cadence and repeat it six times before a 15 minute cool down. So just remember, the idea of this session is not meant to be a high intensity, but merely it's to work on your aerobic endurance. So being able to spin a higher cadence. 
Session number two is like a micro interval session that is focused on cadence. So you want to get that same 15 minute warm up in, at which point you're going to start your first block where for the first 30 seconds, you're at 130 RPM, which is really going some. And then for the next 30 seconds, you're down at 90. You can repeat this four to six times per block and between, you're gonna have a slightly longer recovery of between five and six minutes. Try to get in four to five blocks per session before you do your cool down. You lot are going to love this final session because what it is, is a high cadence recovery ride. Yes, and a high cadence recovery ride will help you recuperate from those really hard workouts, but it will also provide you with active recovery. But mainly, it will enable you to pedal at higher cadences. It will indeed, and the premise of it is very, very simple. You can do this either on an indoor trainer or out on the road for between 20 minutes and an hour. As ever with a recovery ride, you want it to be very light in intensity, less than 50% of FTP, but throughout, you hold a cadence of over 100. That's right, you can recover and train something at exactly the same time. Let us know how you get on with these training sessions. Yep, you can do that by leaving your comments in the section just beneath this video. Uh, today was all about spinning and high cadence, spin to win, but you're also going to need a decent FTP. And if you'd like to improve that, you can find a video uh, in the middle, just down here. And if you did like this video, then don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Siempre yo en Inglaterra. Hey, mate, I don't know what you're talking about. It's always sunny in England. That's what you said, isn't it? Always sunny in England. Yep. <laughs> Also rained on the Angleroo, I'll have you know. <laughs> oh, <that's true. laughs>